Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again. Pardon me. Well, keep going. Hello again, and thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. As you can see, Art and I are with Dave Samuels, our certified financial planner. Uh, Dave, you are the CIO, you're the founder and CIO of Corinthian Wealth Management. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time to explain um, retirement planning for us. Of course, Good to see you, Dave. Thank you. You know, Dave, you're, you've been providing us with a masterclass, that first general overview that we had, and then uh, uh, you're, you've talked about a couple of the pillars uh, of uh, wealth management uh, as uh, you present to your clients. Uh, as I said, it's, it's like a real masterclass, uh, especially for those of us who know even something about it. Uh, it's all those missing little parts that only an expert like yourself and your people in your firm certified financial planners could provide. Uh, one thing that um, uh, when I first started doing planning uh, and not with a uh, financial planner like yourself, although I'm thinking about it because uh, unlike uh, some people, I know that I'm going, I have a 25 year rolling plan. So uh, I've got a sister who's planning my 100th birthday party. And so I don't know how long beyond that I'm gonna go. But uh, as with most of our audience, uh, which is basically 50 and above, we're living longer, healthier lives so that people are not dying at 65, like when Social Security first came out, they planned everything so that they wouldn't have to give away much money. Uh, but now people are routinely living into the 70s, 80s and 90s, and, and our kids and grandkids are gonna live uh, without you know, other intervening things, maybe to 100 and beyond. So one of the things that particularly for those of us who are semi-retired, if you will, is um, being concerned about not having our cash, having enough cash to live on, uh, at least in some degree of the way we used to have when we had a full-time job, uh, if we were lucky enough to have a good full-time job, uh, but also that now that we may be living 10 or 15 years longer than originally presumed 10 or 15 years ago, uh, how, how do we plan to try to keep our cash flow uh, and, and the funds from not running out. Is there, is there a trick to that? Is there something that you look at? Um, I wouldn't say there's a simple trick, but Art, you brought up the number one fear of folks over 50 is having their money run out before they do. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. put it another way is that it goes back to cash flow. In other words, we're used to a certain lifestyle and most of us are just want to keep the party going, keep that lifestyle going. So one, a, a few things that we do on retirement planning is we'll sit down with folks and, and take a look and say, what, what are your assets? And assets as in your savings, your checking, your IRA, maybe you've got other brokerage accounts, even your real estate is considered an asset, okay? And then what are your liabilities? And that's your debt. Maybe you have credit card debt, or maybe you owe a mortgage on your real estate. And then getting kind of a balance of net worth and subtracting the two. So, for example, if you, everything you own, your home, your cars, your accounts are worth $1 million, and you have, I'll say, $300,000 of debt, including a mortgage, maybe car payments, other things. So your, your equity or your net worth is $700,000. We like to know that number because then that tells us what we're dealing with because you're always going to have to what's called service your debt. That mortgage you'll, will always require a mortgage payment. Your credit cards, if you have them, will require credit card payments. So you probably see what I'm getting to. As we get closer to retirement, we like to see little or no debt. That's a huge help. Because think of all the money that won't go out the door for a mortgage or won't go out the door for a car payment or credit card payments or, or other payments. So one baseline retirement planning we start is keeping your debt down. It's not totally uncommon to, re to retire with a mortgage. I prefer on the planning side, you don't, you don't even have that. It's so much easier to plan and it's so much simpler. Less mail, uh, less things to look up on the internet. When you do your banking, one less thing to worry about transacting money, leaving your account and going to pay down whatever that debt is. You know, that's a, an interesting perspective. Uh, 
because you really do have to start early uh, to plan for that. And there is so much we don't think about as our assets. Um, and, and yet everything together that you have, once you stop working, or you're you're working, you know, your income slacks off. Mm -hmm. That those assets have to deliver money to you somehow, right? Yeah. That's that's what the financial planner helps us do. It's figure out how to how to make our assets deliver some kind of income, ca yeah. cash flow. So, so John, we have something to live on. What you're referring to is making those assets productive. So I'm going to give an example. Back in the day, in the early to mid 2000s, if you had a million dollars, you could drop it into CDs, spread them out over multiple CDs, and interest rates were what, five, six percent? So I'm going to exaggerate and say they're six percent. Say, wow, I've got it made. If you know you knew you need to draw five thousand a month or sixty thousand a year, you could put your million dollars in the CDs, which are, of course are guaranteed. We're spreading them out. You're getting your five thousand a month off guaranteed money, and you're not invading your principal. What a wonderful concept! And that worked for a while. However, now we know interest rates are much, much lower. That doesn't work anymore. So now, if we're going to generate, make our assets productive, that means we have to look at our investment portfolio, maybe as a starter. And we're talking about when we're close to or into retirement. Say, hey, we want to get a good rate of return, not take too much risk, because we realize down the road we might have to be selling off some of these assets that are producing for our living expenses. So yeah. that's one, one type of, I mean, a little simplistic here, but that's one type of baseline planning that we look at when we look at retirement money. Yeah. And of course, risk management is another yeah. pillar of uh, financial planning that we'll talk about in another video. Yes. But uh, going back to cash flow and ret funding your retirement, you really have to know ahead of time how much money you're going to have as well as how much money you really need to live on. Now, I got to tell you, it was my experience as I reached maturity. <laughs> the, okay, John, the age John I think that's sudden, one, I'm one thing that, less income. John, one, yeah. that's an elusive goal for the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it was my experience that um, I, the cash flow really is is critical because you just you, you can't I, I don't know I'm looking for the right words you really can't plan see that's not correct just knowing what I could live on I I know that I could not reduce my living expenses, let me put it that way, to the point where, as a younger man, I heard things like, oh, you won't need as much money because you're retired. Oh, you won't need this. You won't need you know what? I didn't find that to be true. I found it very, very hard to reduce our living expenses. Okay. So, John, that brings up step one we strongly, strongly encourage you to do a budget, a one-pager. And a budget simply means take what you are spending, and you're going to get a number. Some things you're going to have to smooth out. Some maybe expenses you pay off quarterly or semi-annually, as in, say, your property taxes. But you'll smooth it out, and we'll get a number that we can quantify into monthly. We like using monthly because most people do their bills monthly and think on a monthly basis. So now we have a number, your budget. That's what you know you need to live on. They include everything. Then we want to say, hey, what is your income? And your income, we want to include all the sources, your, your what's called W-2 income, that's your regular income from work. Maybe you have other income of coming in from rental properties, pension, whatever it is you have, Social Security, we want to know. Now we look at your income. We match the two together. Is your income higher or lower than your expenses. If it's lower, you are creating debt, not healthy for retirement. If your income is higher, that's a good, healthy first first take. Second, we're going to move, and people, many people, times people say, I want to retire at age so and so. I've had it. Okay. Sometimes after we run the numbers, though, we say, you know, you can do that. 
you're going to be pretty thin on retirement. Your number one choice is you can work longer. You can work more. What do you mean? Well, you say you want to retire at age 65. Can you work another three, four years? Can you delay taking Social Security? Ideally, if you're really pressed, some people are now working to age 70. You say, why would anyone do that? Because that's when you get your maximum Social Security. You've got Medicare that's kicked in the, to um, cover your medical insurance. There's different ways of taking that. And that's another discussion. But all these things to consider. Because we find out people, one a huge reason it's hard to retire early is what are you going to do for your medical insurance? If you're talking about retiring at 60, that's five years of medical insurance. Price it out. It ain't cheap. So that's a big reason to keep folks working longer. I know I'm not saying something that's a lot of fun, but it's something folks just, just have to look at. And yes, I know you said it, John, but we'll always take a look. What areas can you reduce expenses? I don't care if it's going out to eat. Maybe next time you purchase a car, a less expensive car. There's maybe just a number of things to consider, maybe cutting back on travel. So these are painful discussions, but it boils down to what's important to you. Where do you, this quality of life that you want and you look forward to, is it worth making adjustments to have that quality of life? That, that's a personal choice. You know, it's a little yeah. bit more, a little bit more, but uh, when uh, uh, my wife and I started doing our planning, one of the things that uh, the person we were working with did was they ran mortality tables. And mm -hmm. uh, again, notwithstanding my uh, uh, pension for a 25 year rolling plan, uh, they at least uh, could look at it objectively and say, look, well, you've got X number of years and your wife has X number of years. And if given all of your investment and so on and so forth, and, and if the dividend rate stays about the same and so on and so forth, that this money could last till let's say you're 98. And if they believe that you're only going to leave, live to 96, well, they have a fairly good sense that, you know, uh, we should be in a good place uh, if we don't overdo it and, and take that trip to, uh, to Europe or have uh, uh, Porter uh, or, or have uh, a filet mignon uh, every night, uh, or if you're a vegan, having expensive uh, vegetables. Uh, so uh, that's a sort of kind of planning that we did, but without having a third party sort of push you in that direction, you could find out that you'll run out of cash pretty soon uh, if you get that luxury car every year, if you uh, uh, and, and don't, you know, let's say hold on to it for five years, you want to replace it every three years. So uh, this is the kind of advice it seems that you would help somebody think through uh, because yeah. in the end people have to make up their own decisions and you in fact could run out of money yeah and as you're pointing out life expectancy is one of the factors that we use john because part of what we do we can model various portfolios and various lifestyles say so, okay here's the amount of money we have to work with here is a projected life expectancy and then we'll project various scenarios that the stock market may or may not do. Say, here's about how long your money could last. Obviously no guarantees, because we're dealing with a lot of unknowns. Tell me the day you're gonna die and tell me exactly what the stock market is gonna do. Well, that's ridiculous. So the best we can do is look at various scenarios and we call it modeling. And say, based on what you're telling us here, here's about what to expect. And remember part of the expenses as we talked in the early uh, one of our earlier videos is taxes because you know the more you take if, if most of your money is ira money well you know every time you withdraw a dollar you're taxed at your ordinary income rate and so we have to factor that in as part of maybe even just required minimum distributions as i mentioned earlier we factor in social security um occasionally we'll factor in other potential issues one of them is long-term care well, we're going to ask people, do you have long-term care insurance? The answer most of the time is no. So we then say, well, if you had a long-term care claim or situation, what would you do? How would we handle it? And we try to give different ideas for that. So yes, you, you, you used a critical um, commentary, John, as far as life expectancy, but there's a number of factors we like to model in. And then we're on projections and say, based on this, do we want to make some adjustments? 
And that's one of the basic ones is do you want to, can you work longer? Can you cut your expenses back? You know, Dave, it seems to me that one of the great um, values of going to a certified financial planner is learning your options. Um, very few of us uh, really understand all of these things that you're talking about. And um, when you sit with a financial planner and you give me the options with your models or whatever, um, that's really helpful because I, I now can make an informed and intelligent choice of what I want to do or how I want to, you know, save my money or spend my money, that kind of thing. I, I think that's really valuable. Um, and, of course, there's a lot of specifics to all of that. You know, there's yeah, a lot of you, details. You could, yeah, you could also help us uh, uh, say that maybe you want to make it plan C or D, that you help your grandson get a major league contract uh, with the, your favorite baseball team and keep him in your good graces so that he'll take care of you in your declining uh, years when you run out. But you might be able to help dissuade some people from having that as their primary plan. Right. Yeah. And it's as John brought up, we're always trying to, as we say, lay out the options. I mean, there's no one size fits all, which I think is fairly obvious here. But there's different choices. And that's why it's we so encourage it's critical to plan early on. Because imagine, I'll give you a quick example. So imagine your IRA money, if most of it can be a Roth IRA, when it comes time for distributions, wouldn't it be wonderful to have most of those distributions tax-free? That could make a big difference in planning versus having money in a traditional IRA, which you got the benefit going in as in the contribution, but now you pay going out as in a distribution. Is it always the right thing to do? Of course not. But that's just one concept that we try to use for, for cash flow management. And again, work. this is really two critical stages of cash flow. The first is during your working years. You're working, you're, you're in the accumulation phase. You're saving. You're saying, how much money can I sock away? Where am I gonna put it? Is it the IRAs or the Roth, whatever you're doing? Step two, now you've stopped working. The goal here is preservation, enjoy yourself, and then goal three may be legacy planning, and that gets us back to estate planning, is distributing your wealth to your heirs. Uh, good point. Good point. And, and as we talked about earlier, you got to start early. What a, what a shock to decide you're 65, you decide you're going to retire, and you, don't, you, you haven't really done any planning, and all of a sudden you find out how little money you have. Yeah. Um, that would be a terrible position to be in. you got to start early. And, John, I think there's a statistic. I'd have to double-check my records. Um, the average American in their 60s have saved, I mean, just over 100000 or something. You say, wait a minute. How can anybody have a long-term gay plan of retirement having a small amount of money left? It could be in the IRA or the bank. I mean, you can do some simple math. Forget interest, forget everything. You can say, okay, if you're living on, I'll make up a number, 4000 a month. Well, 4000 a month, that's what, about 50000 a year I'm rounding up? Two, three years, you're out of money. And that's assuming you've had no surprises. Because we'd like to see a savings plan set aside as in just a bank account. Remember, it's, for this, it's not the return on your money, it's the return of your money. Because stuff happens. We, we want to plan for the unexpected. Something's going to happen, we just don't know what it is, that we're going to say, gosh, I didn't plan on this. I'm sure lucky I have this money here to take care of it. Well, one of the things that uh, happened to our audience is that we've been able to uh, convince you to share some of your knowledge with us so that uh, maybe we can help avoid those surprises. Yeah. And uh, uh, now that we've been through several of the pillars of uh, uh, what the nature of your advice is to people and how you help them plan for their retirement, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, the next couple of sessions where you drill down to some of the other things that people should be thinking about uh, before they're 50 and even when, once you're going to the 50s and 60s, things that you can do to make your life uh, more enjoyable and uh, perhaps not run out of cash now that we're all living longer, healthier lives. Thank you, Dave. Of course, and thank you. Good to be here.
For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.